Hello or good evening dear viewers of the Berber History and Traditions channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button to see the next video. Today we will tell you about Berber King Masinissa. Masinissa 240 BC 148 BC was the prince of the Massilians, who consolidated the fragmented Numidian tribes creating a kingdom in North Africa that expanded and prospered in the context of the Punic Wars. Carthage, a port city on the northern coast of Africa in the region of present-day Tunisia and Algeria, was founded in 814 BC by Phoenician settlers who eventually dominated the local North African farmers and nomads. Phoenician merchants along the Mediterranean coast, sedentary farmers on the watered plains and migrating herders on the steppes bordering the Sahara Desert coexisted with commercial and cultural exchange. The growing economic and military power of the unified city-state of Carthage resulted in its dominance over the fragmented Numidian tribes. Masinissa was born around 240 BC at a time of conflict in the long-standing relationship between the Carthaginians and the local Africans. The Numidian tribesmen had provided the Carthaginians with quick and skilled cavalry auxiliaries, sharpened by generations of inter-tribal strife. But, following the defeat of Carthage in the war against Rome, they were not paid for their services. Rebelling against Carthage, the fragmented Numidian tribes could not form a united front against the Carthaginians and were soon once again dominated by their powerful neighbor, Masinissa's father. Gaia, was the leader of the Massilians, a traditionally nomadic tribe that lived southwest of Carthage, who apparently had established treaties of friendship with Carthage and may have sealed these treaties by his marriage to a woman, Carthaginian woman from a prominent family. The Egyptian historian Appian records that Massinissa was raised and educated in the city of Carthage which familiarized him with the combined Phoenician and Greek ideas that formed the Punic culture of Carthage. He also learned the traditional skills and wisdom of the nomadic Massilians, such as horseback riding and survival in the desert, and this combined upbringing would later serve him well. According to the account of Diodorus Siculus, Massinissa, as the heiress of an important Carthage ally, was engaged to Sophoniba the lovely daughter of Hasdrubal Gisco, an important Carthaginian general. After the outbreak of the Second Punic War in 218 BC, Massinissa led a contingent of Numidian horsemen to support Hasdrubal against the Romans in Spain. Livy in his famous story relates that the young Massinissa and his Numidian cavalry played a key role in the year 212 BC. Defeat of the Roman legions led by Naus and Publius Scipio. After his first campaign, Massinissa returned to Africa in 210 BC, where he raised an additional force of 5,000 Numidians to support Hasdrubal in Spain. In 209 BC, Publius Scipio put the Carthaginian forces of Hasdrubal, including Massinissa, to flight. Among those captured was the Brash Mosiva a young nephew of Massinissa who had joined the cavalry against his uncle's orders. This boy was allowed to return unscathed to his uncle, an action which caused Massinissa to be grateful to Scipio. As the Carthaginian forces retreated, Massinissa and a force of 3,000 Numidian cavalry were tasked with harassing the Romans throughout Spain, destroying farms and towns that supported their enemy. In 207 BC, a new Carthaginian offensive was mounted. A Carthaginian force reached Italy before being defeated, while another offensive, led by Hasdrubal and supported by Massinissa, was undertaken in Spain. Confronted in 206 BC by Scipio's newly reinforced Roman army, the forces of Hasdrubal and Massinissa were defeated and put to flight thus diminishing the Carthaginian threat from Spain. Seeing the change in the fortunes of the Carthaginians, Massinissa opened negotiations with the Romans. He then returned to Africa and conferred with tribal leaders on his decision to switch allegiance to Rome. With the Romans keen to subvert Carthaginian allies among the Numidians, Scipio courted and won the support of Syphax the leader of the Mazesilians away from the Carthaginians. Meanwhile, after his lecture, 
Massinissa returns to Gades in Spain and makes an alliance with Scipio, promising to support him in Africa against Carthage. But Roman senators like Quintus Fabius Maximus were not in favor of Scipio's strategy, instead wanting him to force Hannibal out of Italy before leading an African campaign. These senators assess Syphax and Massinissa as selfishly desiring supremacy in Africa with the fall of Carthage. The next two years proved frustrating for Massinissa, who was forced to suffer the subsequent delay of Scipio's African invasion. In Massinissa's absence, the leadership of his tribe was usurped by Mazatulus, leaving Massinissa struggling from 205 to 203 BC to take his place. Syphax also proved an obstacle when begged by Hasdrubal he again became an ally of Carthage, sealing the treaty by marriage to Hasdrubal's daughter Sophoniba, to whom Massinissa had been betrothed. With limited resources, Massinissa then had to fight against the combined opposition of Mazatulus and his ally Syphax. Some loyal veterans of Gaia supported Massinissa, and early successes led to increased popular support among the Massilians against his opponent's superior forces. Massinissa defeated Mazatulus, only to be threatened by the forces of Syphax in 204 BC and hunted in the desert. Many of his subjects then submitted to Syphax. Continuing to conduct raids from mountain fortresses, Massinissa pillaged Syphax and Carthaginian territories until Syphax's forces retaliated, driving Massinissa from his fortress and wounding him. Massinissa and a handful of survivors charged into a flood-swollen river. Carried downstream, they escaped. After recovering from his wounds, Massinissa recruited a new army from his tribesmen who were amazed at his survival. He established a new base in the mountains between the capital of Syphax's fortress at Cerda and the coastal city Hippo Regis. Once again, however, his base of operations was seized and Massinissa narrowly escaped. With the surviving horsemen he fled east to the Scipio bridgehead in Little Cerda gathering local followers along the way. Massinissa's fortunes changed when he joined Scipio. His Numidian cavalry contributed to the series of victories won by Roman forces, especially as they acted as bait to lure opposing forces out of fortified cities into Roman traps. Although Scipio courted Syphax's defection from the Carthaginians and failed, he managed to devise a plan to disrupt the camps of the huge armies led by their adversaries, Hasdrubal and Syphax. Massinissa and his Numidian followers launched the ensuing attack, sneaking into the camp at night and setting fires in the huts. In the smoke and confusion, Massinissa's forces wreaked havoc, distracting the sentries of the nearby Carthaginian camp leaving it vulnerable to Scipio's attack. As Syphax and Hasdrubal escaped, Livy reports that 40,000 troops were killed, 5,000 captured, and large amounts of supplies secured. This defeat led the rulers of Carthage to recall Hannibal from Italy, as they feared an attack on Carthage. Massinissa, supporting Scipio, defeated the briefly assembled forces of Hasdrubal and Syphax. The survivors of the battle were pursued by a combined Roman and Numidian force west of Massazilian territory, while Scipio tightened his grip on the southern part of Carthaginian territory. With his victories, Massinissa consolidated his position among his own while his adversary Syphax took advantage of a brief respite to raise another army from his tribal stronghold around the capital of Cerda, an army defeated by Roman and allied forces which captured Syphax. Pressing toward Cerda in front of the Roman legions, Massinissa exhibited Syphax in chains and convinced the city's leading citizens to surrender. Entering the city, he was greeted by Sophoniba who begged not to be handed over to the Romans. Although Massinissa easily gave his word, it was a promise he would struggle to keep. According to Livy, he married Sophoniba the day before the Roman rulers arrived at Cerda. Roman officers were outraged and challenged Massinissa's decision. Judgment in the matter was left to Scipio who was absent in the east. Massinissa and the Romans to the west continued to subdue the Numidian towns and forces led by Vermina, 
a son of Syphax who continued to support Carthage. Scipio eventually confronted Syphax, who blamed his betrayal on Sophoniba's manipulations and warned that she would likely persuade Masinissa to defect to the Carthaginians. As a result, Scipio later took Masinissa aside, praising her achievements but proclaiming that, accused of overthrowing an ally, so Phoneba should be sent to trial in Rome. Distraught, Masinissa pleaded in vain. After wondering what to do, he sent a faithful poison servant to his new bride, hoping to fulfill the promise he had made not to hand her over to the Romans. So Phoneba chose to commit suicide. Although annoyed by Masinissa's action, Scipio was eager to keep Masinissa as a Roman ally and personal friend. In a public ceremony, Scipio proclaimed Masinissa king of the Numidians and presented him with gifts symbolic of his new rank. The assertion of the Roman Senate cemented the relationship, and Masinissa loyally threw his efforts behind the Romans. A shrewd politician among his own people, Masinissa demanded and obtained the release of many Numidians who had been captured. The new king then led a contingent of 6,000 cavalry and 4,000 infantry east of Ziyama where Scipio confronted Hannibal and the forces Carthage had recalled to Africa. In the ensuing battle, Masinissa led the allied Numidian cavalry on the right side of the battle formation and successfully outflanked the opposing cavalry. The collapse of Hannibal's formidable forces led Carthage to ask for an armistice. During mopping up operations, Masinissa defeated Vermina and others who challenged his authority. After the Battle of Ziyama, Scipio nearing the end of his term was eager to conclude a treaty with the Carthaginians. The terms of the treaty were nevertheless very demanding and included provisions for Scipio's protege, Masinissa. After the provisions for war reparations and limitations on armaments came an absolute restriction of the right of the Carthaginians to wage war without the consent of Rome and a requirement that they live in peace with Masinissa and the Numidians in his colony. Scipio gave Masinissa the city of Cirta and the entire kingdom of Syphax as well as dominion over the Massilians. Now master of all Numidia and free from any Carthaginian interference, Masinissa took advantage of his status as an ally of Rome in the post-war situation. He consolidates his position by promoting the economic well-being of his subjects, which makes them loyal. Over time, he encouraged the growth of sedentary farms whose produce supplied Rome with food and brought money to Numidia, while economic growth was also facilitated by the minting of coins bearing the likeness of Masinissa. The prosperity of Numidia benefited from the long peaceful reign of their king, increasing his territory and power while gaining a reputation as a consummate ally of Rome. He encroached on the fertile lands of the Badrinus River Valley and the prosperous Carthaginian towns along the frontier, claiming them as ancestral lands. Under the provisions of the peace treaty, Carthage could not retaliate and therefore appeal to Rome. In 193 BC, a Roman commission examined the case of the Carthaginians, but decided in favor of Masinissa. Other appeals were made in 182. 174 and 162 BC as Masinissa seized more land, territory he was never forced to surrender. Some have since shown Masinissa as a clever politician making his inroads into the days of Roman discontent with Carthage, leading them to ignore his offenses. Frustrated by the Roman decisions, the Carthaginians ended up violating the Treaty of 201 BC and attacked Numidia in 149. Masinissa though very old, led a successful counter-offensive in a dispute recognized by classical writers as the immediate cause of the Third Punic War. Accusing a violation of the peace treaty of 201 BC, the Romans declared war and Appian reports that old Masinissa was offended that he was not consulted or invited to participate in the formulation of Roman war plans. In 148 BC, at the start of the war, Masinissa died leaving his successors to support the Roman effort that would destroy Carthage two years later in 146 BC. As client king, Masinissa accomplished much in the shadow of Rome. While our accounts of his life come from sources that focus on the Romans, 
it is clear that he created a nation in a vast geographical region inhabited by nomadic tribes and settled farmers. An inspiring general, always ready to go into battle, and a shrewd politician, able to manipulate diplomatic situations for the benefit of his nation, Massinissa was granted the title of king by the Romans. Among the Numidians, he had deserved it. We have come to the end of this video. I hope you liked it. See you next time.